One of the central questions about the extent of the construction zone is the extent to which the Constitution has a legal meaning, which is necessarily a technical meaning. The concepts are probably polished, as it were, compared to the concepts in ordinary language. The question is, how was the Constitution understood? What kind of meaning did it have at that time? So maybe the context was thin, maybe it was thick. That's, I think, a major debate in originalism that's going on right now. So let me tell you about some of the contenders in that debate. To begin with, uh, someone who has the thinnest view of originalist meaning. There's a professor named Jack Balkin at the Yale Law School, who's the originator of something called framework originalism. And he sees the Constitution as having quite a thin meaning. You know, it has certain meanings, or he certainly agrees. For instance, there are two senators in every state. But most of the grand clauses of the Constitution have a very thin semantic meaning. Even what establishment of religion is is not very uh, clear. Uh, what the Commerce Clause is, it could mean intercourse, it could mean a lot of different matters, uh, uh, perhaps. And we can interpret that according to the needs of our time, according to what social movements demand from it. And that obviously makes the Constitution a very flexible document and not a very constraining document even under originalism. But to take the other view that's most strongly on the other side would be a view, I think, of the Constitution as a legal document informed by original methods. This would suggest that a lot of the terms of the Constitution that may seem abstract have a legal meaning that has been defined actually before the Constitution was created by English legal history or the 14th Amendment by antebellum history in the United States. And that has a much more constraining effect and that reduces, if not eliminates, the construction zone also because there are rules of interpretation that suggest you're required to take the better interpretation even if it's only a little better than the other. Whereas uh, Professor Balkan, I think, would suggest you're able to take any plausible interpretation of the Constitution. Now, I think there are uh, many originalists who are somewhere in between these two methods who would see that the Constitution has a thicker meaning than Professor Balkan, but would not accept that the Constitution has this very thick legal meaning that I and Professor Rappaport advocate. 